Alright, hello my friends, and welcome back to another Brotato class guide. Today we're covering the Doctor. Hope you're all doing well. I want to shout out Inc7159, who requested the Doctor. If there's a class that you want to see added to the list, let me know, and we'll get it done. Actually getting pretty close to the end of the vanilla class guides, so get in your requests while the getting's good. Alright, so the Doctor gets is I think one of the best characters if you are new to Danger 5, you want to get your first Danger 5 win. I think the Doctor is one of the smoothest and simplest characters to play to a win in Danger 5, and just in general to a win in Brotato. You get 100% bonus attack speed, or rather you get 200% attack speed with medical weapons minus 100% attack speed overall, so... You're forced to use medical weapons, but get 100% bonus attack speed with them. Obviously, that's an enormous increase to your damage output. You also get 5 HP regeneration, and HP regeneration is doubled. So that means that every time it would tick 1 HP for any other character, it ticks 2 HP for the Doctor. You get start with 5 harvesting, which is nice, jump starts your economy and your levels and everything right off the bat, and... Uh, the only downside you have is armor modifications are reduced by 50%. I think for the most part you can ignore this line of text because and just buy armor the way you normally would. Um, armor is really valuable on this character because you have such great healing already, and armor increases the value of healing significantly the same way it increases the value of maximum HP. Which weapon we choose for the Doctor, and you notice there are only two options, They're the two level 1 medical weapons, I think actually doesn't matter a ton. And in fact, I think it doesn't matter so much that for the first time in one of these guides, I'm going to go with a random weapon, just for fun and uh, just because I think that these weapons are... The scissors might be a little bit better, but I think they're actually pretty close in terms of value for the Doctor. So we're going to random and see what we get. Looks like we're going with medical guns off of this one. With the plus 100% attack speed, the main downside of the medical gun is mitigated, so we should be okay in terms of damage output. Normally the medical gun, I think, is a very weak weapon because it attacks really slowly at sort of a medium damage rate. Um, it doesn't scale incredibly well, but because we have double attack speed, we start with so much inherent scaling already that we can make this weapon work very easily. All right, I am going to roll past this because I'm looking for more harvesting, especially on characters that start with some harvesting. Adding more harvesting will get us to that magical 20 mark where we start getting two per, uh, two per wave sooner. So definitely want to grab a little harvesting here. One thing that's kind of cool about the medical gun is it just has normal damage scaling. It, it just scales one to one um, with range damage. So it's actually really not that bad if it attacks twice as fast. I'm actually going to, on almost any other character, I would lock the Lemonade, but we basically don't need to buy any healing on the Doctor, so I'm just going to roll past this and maximize the chances of us finding more medical guns, although I will maybe lock the Lens. I think we'll, we'll just roll past and just keep buying medical guns. There's a decent chance that I just miss a medical gun because I'm so used to ignoring it in the shop that uh, I think my brain is very likely to just skip over them, so... Hopefully that doesn't happen, but forgive me if it does. Because medical guns have inherent lifesteal, um, and lifesteal is obviously great for ranged weapons, and of course we have the base regen, and the doctor is going to end up with 10 regen because we're, we're forced to use medical weapons. So we will get the regen from the medical weapon tag in addition to our starting 5 regeneration. Let me grab harvesting. Uh, there really is just no reason to buy healing on this character, so that's why I'm, I'm switching, skipping lemonade and stuff like that. Two range damage is great, that will help scale our damage significantly, and I'm going to buy the medical gun. If you are relatively new to Danger 5, the reason that I'm doing this in the shop is that you are guaranteed two weapons every 
uh, every roll in the shop to see two, at least two weapons for the first two shops. Since we have weapons tagged with medical and gun, and medical gun specifically, we're more likely to see weapons with those tags and more likely to see this specific weapon. So we can pretty efficiently search for this weapon in the, our first two shops by rolling. And we only need two open slots to maximize the chances of finding that, so it's okay to keep stuff locked. As long as I have two slots that will be filled with weapons. Shooting for 10 here, or 12 here now, because we were we found a level 2 ranged damage. The thing that I will need the most is flat damage from range damage or percentage damage. Critical hit chance, of course, is also not, not bad. I don't need attack speed very much because it's already our highest stat, and you always want to increase the lowest stat that's contributing to your damage. So we have 100 attack speed and only 2 range damage, so we want to increase our range damage over other things. We won't use this engineering for anything, so 3 materials is still better. Let me roll past all this, and I'm just going to grab some maximum HP here. was hoping to find more harvesting and get up to 20, but... Max HP is also good. Grab the bag and the medical gun and roll. Normally on a ranged build, I'd buy the lifesteal, but medical guns have inherent lifesteal of 40%, which is way more than you need. Usually you just need like 10% or 15% lifesteal or so. Um, so 40% lifesteal is great. Although I didn't lock it, I'm still going to buy the lemonade here. Uh, I think having a, a few points of consumable heal helps out a lot in emergencies, and um, while it wasn't worth locking in our first two shops, because I, I wanted to make sure we got to our six weapons as soon as I could, uh, I think it's still worth buying when it shows up, because it's also really cheap and has no downsides. I'm trying to orient this guide a little more for newer players. Uh, although, of course, obviously, there will be lots of information here for, for experts as well. But because this character, I think, lends itself so well to being your first or second character that you get Danger 5 wins with, or even your first wins in Rotato in general, I'm going to be focusing a little on trying to make it accessible to new players. All right, let's grab this recycling. And here, I'm just going to take harvesting. Once we hit 20, so harvesting goes up by 5 every level. 5% every level, um, but for some reason this rounds up, even though everything else in the game rounds down, so as soon as we hit 20, that 5% becomes 2 points every level instead of 1 point. I'm going to grab this, and I'll just take 1 range damage here. Let me grab the tree, and I will take some movement speed. We're a little below our movement speed. We don't care about range at all, and also get 50 range, because we're medical guns and I will keep on rolling. It's tempting maybe to branch out into something like that level three laser gun, but of course on this character, don't do that because you only get your attack speed with medical guns and attack half as fast with every other weapon. Coffee, I think is still a good enough item that I'm gonna buy it, even though we don't need to scale our attack speed uh, particularly, but going up to 120% attack speed is still pretty nice, just because coffee is such an efficient item. I'm going to keep rolling and roll once more here. Let me grab this lucky charm. Luck is great. And I will also lock the compass. We do want to scale our crit chance, but it's really important, I think, to get some move speed going early. In particular, because you will often end up with items that decrease your move speed, being some of the best items available to you. So you want to have a little bit of padding for, for your move speed to make those items purchasable. Going too far below 100% move speed, I have found, is a recipe for instant death. And I like to typically try to stick around 110 or so percent, just so we're enough faster than the aliens to make it possible to evade them easily. Because we have a decent amount of harvesting, you can see we're already getting a decent level of income going. Let me roll past that, and here I'm just going to grab this crit chance. Um, scaling our crit chance up, even though we are going to reduce it, is still going to be really nice for us. Let me pick up the Lucky Charm and the Peaceful Bee, 
And then, okay, we do have enough to buy the, the compass. Peaceful Bee, even though it decreases our range damage, is a very efficient item, gives us harvesting and dodge, and I will buy a compass. It's more efficient for melee characters than ranged characters, because range damage is twice as valuable as uh, melee damage, but I think even on ranged characters, Peaceful Bee is still usually worth the purchase. I do need to start increasing my damage a little bit before we hit our elites, and one thing that you should really do um, especially on, on Danger 5, is check what waves your elites are appearing. I haven't done that yet, but you want to make sure that you're hitting sort of damage or defensive breakpoints appropriate to when the elites are showing up. So you might prioritize buying damage before an elite wave over buying economy or something along those lines. Also, surprised that I haven't seen any more leveled up weapons, unless, as I said, my brain has just been ignoring the medical gun. <laughs> Um, that are showing up in the shop. Usually you would want to have a couple level 2 weapons at this point. Definitely taking the speed here, and I'll just take max HP. I wouldn't mind this attack speed as well, but our, our max HP is quite low, so I'd like to start boosting that. And I'm going to roll because by, on wave 6, with 30 luck, I think we are very likely to find a level 2 level up here. And we did. Yeah, I'll take 6% speed. I'd rather have gotten a defensive or offensive stat, because our speed is already quite high, but it's still worth it, just because it's the, the level 2 level up. Roll here, and Cyberball is kind of interesting for this character. We do intend to boost our percent damage, although it's quite low right now. And our weapon is not going to be incredibly damaging, so having some non-weapon sources of damage might be good. On the other hand, we don't currently have a ton of luck, and we have negative percent damage. I think I'm going to roll past it, but it's something worth considering. And Medical Turret is an item I like a lot on most characters, but this character already just has its healing completely solved, so we don't have to worry about that at all. Even though Tentacle is a healing item, it's also a critical hit chance boost, so I'm going to grab it. Um, we will get maybe a little bit of healing from it, but also just in general boosting my crit chance is going to be a good way to increase our damage. And finally we got some leveled up guns, this will help a lot. Let's grab this level 2 medical gun. So level 2 gun just has slightly higher base damage, is not particularly better, but still, uh, and slightly higher lifesteal, but it's still a nice upgrade. Just gives us a little bit more damage. Medical guns level reasonably badly, I think, because they just get a little bit of base damage. They don't increase in scaling or anything, although the lifesteal percent chance does go up, but by the time you're at 40%, increasing the percentage chance of life stealing above 40%, I don't think is super important. On this wave, if you have the damage for it, and on most characters you will, you want to allow the eggs to hatch because they're worth more money that way. When you let them hatch and then kill the large aliens, they drop three materials, whereas the egg itself only drops one material. That said, if it costs you killing a lot of other stuff, in order to try to kill the big guys, like it kind of is here, then it's not worth it. Chase down that loot alien, because they drop a box. Explosion size we will unfortunately never get to use, so I'm going to reluctantly recycle this item. But here I'm just going to grab max HP, that's really important. And we actually have really good speed, so the power generator is going to be worth a lot to us right now. That's, that's really nice. Uh, it gives us percent damage, and also percent damage is our lowest stat right now. We haven't found a good way to increase that, so increasing that is going to increase our overall damage output a ton. Let me grab the coupon first, though, of course, and then power generator, and then metal detector. And then I'm going to roll, lock this other medical gun, and... I could throw in one more reroll. If we didn't have something locked, I probably would, but since we do have something locked, I'm just going to save my 50 here. As the power generator has actually increased the damage output of our, our weapons significantly from 15 to 17, uh, and that's without buying any more speed or anything so far. And having reduced our damage again a little bit by buying the metal detector. The thing I'm on the lookout for most at this point is maximum HP, just to make sure that we don't die instantly. Um, 
and also similarly dodge and armor, but max HP first. And then any form of damage and some way to make our shots pierce or bounce would be incredibly impactful. Medical guns have no native pierce or bouncing effect, so adding that increases the level of damage output vastly. I'm going to take actually one range damage over 10% attack speed here, because uh, like I said, attack speed is our highest stat by a lot, so it's more important to get this going. And let me combine by the level 3 medical gun. And then, do I want minus 2 HP for half an armor? Half an armor is still a pretty decent upgrade to our hit point pool, but we do need our and our, our healing uh, efficiency, but we do need our hit point pool to increase overall. I think it is actually worth it. Duct tape is not always an efficient item, but armor is so valuable on this character that even at half value, I think it's worth just starting to buy it right away. Sharp bullet is exactly what I was talking about. This will make our projectiles pierce, and I like snail a lot as an item, um, even though it decreases our speed and therefore also our percent damage with the power generator. Decreasing enemy speed gives you so much leeway that I think it is it's almost always worth buying snail. Finding the piercing shots also before wave nine is really valuable because wave nine is just a horde of small, low health enemies. So. Piercing shots helps us clear those much, much faster. Notice that I, I can just take damage there and then we heal up instantly. Especially with the piercing shots, we have so much lifesteal and attack so quickly that we just heal that right heal that all right back. Trying to collect as many of these materials as I can to make sure that we have them to spend. If you don't collect materials, they go into a pool that doubles materials that you collect in the next wave, but it's obviously better to have money now than money later. Generally speaking, good financial advice. Um, I'm going to not buy the alien worm, even though it looks tempting, but uh, lowering consumable healing is, I think, always a, a dangerous move. So I'm gonna recycle the alien worm. And then here I am going to, considering just buying luck, I think I'm actually gonna reroll this. I wouldn't mind percent damage, but I think we can do better in by buying a, a higher tier thing. And um, I'm just gonna get this 6% uh, dodge, actually. We can start building our dodge. Really good to find this three range damage that will increase our damage output massively. Even at Wave 10, I think it is worth buying Wheelbarrow, just a really efficient item. Tons of harvesting that is going to help itself grow and also give us lots of money. We buy this and see it decreased our damage because of the, the power generator, but still good to buy, I think. Buy the medical gun and keep rolling. I'm going to keep buying duct tape for all the reasons I talked about before. Here we are looking at 5 max HP for no and no other benefit from the little muscly dude but 100 for 5 max hp i think is actually totally fine and then do i want these alien eyes so alien eyes have the benefit of scaling off of your hp and being a non-weapon source of damage but given that we have so much attack speed i think our our weapon damage is going to be fine so i'm gonna skip past the alien eyes and look for more things that pr increase range damage or speed or percentage damage or in this case, maximum HP, like the little muscly dude. And then I'm going to have exactly enough to buy this medical gun and to keep upgrading our medical guns. Let's go to wave 10. Some of the parts of this build definitely aren't coming together perfectly. Like we, we bought the power generator and haven't seen any ways to increase our speed since then. Um, but on the other hand, those two little muscly dudes brought my max HP up to just under 50, which is a much more comfortable place to be. So very glad that we found those and then bought them. Every point of armor that you buy increases your effective HP and also your effective healing by uh, 
six and two thirds percent. So if you're trying to judge the value of buying armor, you can look at that as the the scaling. Um, the number that it shows is going to be a little different, but that's the the end result once you do all the math. So, and it doesn't matter how much or how little you have; it's always going to be the same amount. Triangle of power. I think we are going to pass on. We do want percentage damage quite badly, but one of the benefits of this character is that you can take hits. So I'm going to recycle the triangle of power, and then just buy a little more maximum HP. Let's combine and buy another medical gun. I'm going to buy the pumpkin because we have a, a piercing effect, so increasing piercing damage is really good for us. And keep rolling. And this is great. We can buy recycling machine, which is excellent, great item for economy. Leather vest, which will increase our effective HP by a lot. Really efficient item. And then I'm going to lock these other two to keep upgrading our medical guns and upgrade our percent damage, which again, as our lowest stat, is the one we need to upgrade the most. Next wave, we're fighting an elite, so just getting a little bit more damage before fighting the elite will help a lot. Right now, I think our damage is okay for the wave, but could really use some, some boosts before we have to take an elite down. Just running around trying to avoid these ribcage guys and <laughs> trying not to just get plastered. We have enough regeneration that as long as I don't die in like one hit, we're going to be totally fine. Metal is an excellent find for us. The percent damage is what we need most of all and speed gives us percent damage. Of course, also boosting our armor a little bit means that we are in much better shape. I'm going to keep taking maximum HP here, although I would like to start boosting dodge soon as well. Retromation's hoodie is an excellent item um, for pretty much every character, but really good to find here because we don't care about losing the range at all, really, and the attack speed is not as valuable for us as it is for other characters, but still 30% attack speed is, is really good to get. And because we are buying this, we can actually also buy scope, which is a good item if you don't care about the negative attack speed. And since we, we have now so much positive attack speed, scope can be a reasonable way to get to range damage. I think it's still like that maybe wasn't the most efficient buy, but I think that that's still worth doing. Here I'm going to buy the missile over the medical gun before going into the elite wave. Um, because I think that's going to increase our overall damage output the most, and we just want to have the most damage when facing the elite. Roll again, and I'll lock this lucky charm, because increasing our luck is, is very good as well. And let's go fight an elite. See which one it is. This one shouldn't be too bad. It runs away from you, but the main thing with this elite is that you're going to take incidental hits from the horde that it summons. And we have the, or from the from the horde while it's sort of chasing you down, and we have the health regeneration to be able to tank through those hits no problem. I think I think the main thing about this elite is that just that you need health regeneration. You should try to stay a little ahead of it so that your most of your weapons are focusing on the elite and not on the horde. Just gonna clear out some guys, so make sure that we can kill it. Then I'm going to chase down this loot alien if possible. Took a lot of damage there, actually, so I need to clear some space before I go after the loot guy. Got him. Make sure I'm killing this tree as well. Spider only gives us 6% attack speed and does decrease our dodge and harvesting, but 12% damage is worth a lot to us, so we're definitely taking the spider here. And yeah, I will continue to boost my armor, dodge, and max HP, or armor and dodge. Um, here I am going to, again, upgrade dodge 
now that we have a decent level of max HP, and eat, the more dodge you have, the more each point of dodge is worth. So now that we have 20% dodge, we want to start prioritizing getting that higher. Let me grab some luck and keep upgrading the medical guns, keep on rolling. I'll continue to buy the lemonade and cyberball, I think at this point is worth buying because we now have sort of our core build online. So more luxury items like this are much more worth considering. Roll again and blood donation will be excellent for us even this late in the game. We don't care at all about the take one damage per second and 40 harvesting is a lot. It's gonna work out to, let's see, we're gonna do with 14 through 19, so 6, 240 materials, but also 240 XP. So it will pay for itself very quickly, and of course also harvesting compounds, so it's actually more than that. This wave, there shouldn't be any particularly special strategies. The tentacle guys are not, for most characters, terribly threatening, especially not ranged characters that can just run away from them. Melee characters sometimes struggle a little more. Um, if they are getting you, something to know about them is that they always attack to either side of you. So if you are, if you hold still or just move directly away from them, then they will never hit you. The shackles, we don't want to cap our speed because we have the power generator, so we're going to pass on the shackles. We also don't really care about regeneration or range or anything. And while I wouldn't mind increasing my harvesting, we're about to get a big harvesting boost, so I'm just going to take the armor. Like I said, armor is super valuable. Minigun would be fun uh, for this character if it didn't have minus uh, a huge negative attack speed for it, although we have actually built our attack speed up quite a bit. So we're closer to being able to use non-medical weapons than most doctor builds, but I'm still going to avoid it. Let me keep on rolling. Silver bullet, excellent item. This is going to help us clear elites much faster, and we're going into an elite wave as well. Never buy alien baby. 8% enemy speed is a huge, huge downside. Um, even though we have plus 18% speed, not only does it make it harder for you to, to chase them, uh, it also makes it harder or harder for you to get away from them sort of in a actual technical standpoint. It also just makes it much harder for you to have the reflexes and human reaction time to get away from them. As the game speeds up, it gets harder. Just, you know, ask Tetris, which is the same game over and over again, but faster every time. All right, let's grab cake and... I think at this point, um, no, I'm going to keep buying luck. We have a decent amount of uh, consumable healing and additional luck also gets us better stuff from level ups and so on. With our silver bullet, we should be able to kill this guy pretty quickly. This, I think, is the hardest elite in the game um, because it will chase you down and slide past you as a melee character when it starts it moves into its charge form while also significantly constraining your movement it's a little easier for ranged characters but still i think very difficult because there's a lot of space that it covers with its attacks and the sliding past you effect of its charges makes it difficult for you to constantly keep focus on it manual targeting can help a lot with that i just took a lot of damage so i'm gonna back off and heal up a little bit Manual targeting can help a lot with that, so if you don't have manual targeting on, highly suggest turning it on. Um, and then you can use hold down the mouse just to finish this guy off, as we did there. Wave 14 is also one of the hardest waves to get an elite on, because it's very easy for the screen to become full of those little summons that shoot uh, bullets at you, so it, it turns the whole map into a bullet hell, becomes very hard to, to dodge everything. Even though we don't 
particularly need the lifesteal. In fact, we don't care at all about the lifesteal of the cape. The 20% dodge is a huge boost and also helps with the Retromation's hoodie attack speed. Um, losing two range damage is bad, but definitely cape is worth it here. Octopus reduces our crit chance, but gives us maximum HP. The The regeneration stats are, are whatever. The lifesteal doesn't do anything. The HP regeneration is still okay for us, but um, the max HP is why we're going to take this, even though it does decrease our crit chance. Here I'm just going to take 12% damage. The, our percentage damage is still pretty low, so boosting that is really nice. Let me grab Lucky Charm. Again, even though we don't care about the lifesteal, I'm going to take Ritual just for the percentage damage. And I will throw in one reroll here. Given that I actually have now positive attack speed, I think I'm going to take the nuclear launcher. It doesn't benefit from our medical gun boost, but it's such a fun weapon, and we actually have, you know, 11% attack speed, so it will attack at a normal speed. Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to gonna grab a nuclear launcher. We'll be a nuclear doctor. Let me combine medical guns. Pity I already used the, uh, the Oppenheimer <laughs> thumbnail. <laughs> This I wouldn't recommend doing on most Doctor builds, going even for a fancy non-medical weapon. You should just stick with whichever starting weapon you have. Um, if you're scissors, you should also use uh, circular saws. But if you're medical guns, you should probably just stay medical guns the whole game. But for this particular build, because we found Retromation's hoodie and we're able to boost our attack speed so high so that our attack speed with normal weapons is actually positive. I think it is worth it to branch out into the nuclear launcher. Even with less of a boost to attack speed than our medical weapons, it's enough of a better weapon that I think it's going to pay dividends. Recycling boxing glove here, definitely don't want that. And I will continue to buy just some dodge. Once we get our dodge capped, that helps our maximum HP a ton. Let me combine these two and buy a nuclear launcher, and then I'm gonna buy the metal plate here. Never buy white flag, or very rarely buy white flag or similar items. That reduces your income by reducing the number of enemies available. And again, I'm gonna keep buying duct tape at the cost of some max HP, because uh, boosting our armor is really important right now. Another blood donation. Do we want a second one? I think the second one both is significantly more painful than the first. One damage per second you can pretty much ignore, but two damage per second does start to add up. Um, and also is going to have less benefit overall with the harvesting that I'm going to skip the second blood donation. But I will buy this metal. There we go. We got the nuclear launcher explosion happening. I'll check the, um, the damage at the end there. Yeah, so it does look like the nuclear launcher is exploding on, on both attacks when it's piercing. So the thing that I said in my Artificer build, where it looked like the rocket launcher wasn't doing both explosions, was incorrect. Um, or may have been a, a visual glitch or something caused by how many explosions were on the screen at that time. But this one is definitely triggering two explosions when it pierces through and hits a second thing. You can see those two explosions are sometimes even layered on top of each other, which is super powerful, so... Piercing is very good with explosive weapons. Ignore what I said in my Artificer Guide. <laughs> um, when it's free or cost us significantly less, I'll still take the medical turret. Again, we don't really need it, but it, I think it's it's nice to have. Uh, the percent damage is less of a priority than it was a moment ago, but still a priority. I think I'm just going to take the, the one and a half armor there. Going up to seven armor helps a lot. And let me grab this broken mouth. In fact, we're just going to buy out this whole shop. Roll again. Definitely don't buy torture on this character because uh, you heal so much faster without it. 
explosion damage and explosion size, and we already have a nuclear launcher. I mean, count me in, I guess. We'll take the explosive shells. Uh, not the direction I saw this um, build going, but, you know, <laughs> seems pretty good. Do I want the handcuffs? I think I will lock the handcuffs, because... 90 HP is, is plenty, and we might be able to buy a little more before I actually buy the handcuffs, and the 8 range damage will help a lot. Elemental damage also helps with the nuclear launcher, so going to be a lot of extra damage there as well. I don't actually know if Retromation's hoodie gives you attack speed when for dodge that's over your dodge cap, or if it, it can never go higher than 120. I assume it doesn't give you attack speed over your, over your dodge cap, but if it does, that's a reason to keep buying dodge. We'll probably get to test that this during this build, so looking forward to that one. Just as, as soon as I find a little more dodge. See, the nuclear launcher damage is really starting to stack up. Actually not getting that much money from this wave. Still clearing things a little bit slowly, but... There we go. Alright, so speed, great because it increases our damage. And dodge, great because it increases our attack speed and also our damage. So right now I'm at 29 attack speed. Uh, if the hoodie gives me 12 attack speed, then it maxes it dodge cap if it gives me 20 attack speed then it doesn't so yeah no it's giving me attack speed over cap so that's super powerful let me grab this uh, laser turret or recycle this laser turret because we don't need it so yeah I'm actually just gonna buy 12% more dodge because that's basically 24% attack speed um, yeah I mean that that seems pretty good wow another legendary weapon uh, I don't think I've ever gotten to buy a Gatling laser, so I think I'm going to do it. <laughs> I, again, not the direction I really saw this build going, but it does seem really fun. The Gatling laser is so cool. Um, let me grab these handcuffs as well, I think. I'm not going to buy the minigun because I don't want to spend out my money. I need to make sure I have enough for this Gatling laser. Yeah, I don't think I've gotten to buy a Gatling laser in one of these guides, so... Looking forward to showing that one off as well. You see how quickly the uh, Elite is dying when we focus it. With this Elite, you want to be moving towards it at all times. So you sort of move, stop, move, stop, move towards it, move towards it. And then it will move a little ways away from you and fire a ring. And when you're moving towards it, it's very easy to, do to dodge the, the rings since they're moving towards you. And as you all learned as kindergartners, it's easier to dodge oncoming traffic. <laughs> so we will end up at, yeah, we're capped at 86 HP because of the, the handcuffs. Um, I think I, I bought something that decreased my HP before buying the handcuffs, which, which made that a little worse, but still, 86 should be totally fine. Let me recycle this campfire. Uh, the exoskeleton is excellent for us, gives us basically all the stats that we want at this point. And here I am going to roll, see if we can get something better. So yeah, so right now buying dodge is better than buying this 20% attack speed, and I'm going to do it. <laughs> Go up to 97% attack speed. Um, and let me buy the Gatling laser. Let's combine this medical gun to a level 4 and buy the Gatling laser. And then I guess I'll buy the pumpkin as well. Roll and nothing here that we want in particular. Let's go to wave 19 and we get to, we get to Gatling laser some stuff. Between the nuclear launcher and the Gatling laser, there's not a lot for our medical guns to do anymore, but... <laughs> if, if only we had bouncing projectiles, that would be so much fun. 
There's still time, though. I have faith. On these later waves where the, the brain bug aliens show up, the ones that buff enemies, you definitely want to hunt them down because they double the HP of the enemies that they buff, as well as increasing their move speed and damage. So if they can start stacking up a bunch of buffed enemies, it can actually be really hard to survive. Even when you have a very powerful endgame build like we do right now. Definitely take this uh, speed, and yeah, I'll take the regeneration potion. Gives us regeneration and doubles our HP regeneration again. So I believe that means we regenerate four every... When we have less than 50% HP, we'll regenerate four every tick. So that will be a ton of HP regeneration. Let me grab these wings. That increases our damage as well as our move speed, of course. Range damage still really good here, so do I want this? It does decrease my percent damage, but increases my flat damage. I think it's still worth buying. Um, and then, oh no! Oh, if I hadn't bought that, I could have bought the ricochet. Can I sell something to buy a ricochet? If I recycle uh, one of our medical guns, we can buy ricochet. That's gotta be worth doing here. Sorry, medical gun. The, the end game build strength calls to me. So now we've got the nuclear launcher and Gatling laser with the ricochet. And let's go on into wave 20. Also just checking the weapon damage, Gatling laser did 19K, nuclear launcher did 18, 18K, these others are doing 10K. So they're not actually as far ahead of the medical guns as you might think just because of the attack speed boost, but still pretty far ahead. <laughs> and we get to make our very own laser light show here. This is very um, Vampire Survivors-esque, this, this build. Just stuff bouncing all over the map. We don't heal as quickly now that I've lost all my medical weapons, of course, but this was definitely worth it. Gatling laser and nuclear launcher are both weapons that, for most builds, I think are strong enough to just fully carry you on their own throughout the game. So, worth picking up. This build can use them because we had the attack speed, but many Doctor builds won't be able to. So this ended as kind of a, a funny build for the Doctor, but uh, I think we still showed a pretty solid strategy for getting to that point. Alright, my friends, I hope that you have enjoyed this video and learned a lot, uh, and as always, if you have, you can leave a like on the video. That helps a ton with the metrics. And if you comment, that helps even more with the metrics. Also, I really enjoy reading and replying to all your comments. And you can subscribe to my channel for more Brotato class guides and other strategy game content. Cheers, folks, and I'll catch you next time.